welcome everybody. I am super excited for this presentation. I have somebody just really amazing who has some really wonderful insight to share with you. And I know I'm super excited to learn about it. So welcome, Michelle. Um, Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about her before we kick off with her awesome material all about branding. And this will definitely help you start to put things together for your online course, whether it's your first or whether it's your fifth. Michelle Lewis is a visibility expert and podcast host who specializes in giving gorgeous videos, powerful live streams, and epic courses to launching ladypreneurs. Michelle helps her clients set up chic systems, brand themselves like a badass, and absolutely rock their videos through her online courses and Facebook group Visibility Vixens, which I'm in, and it is awesome. Michelle has a film and TV background, working both in front of and behind the camera on shows like Paycheck, Pretty Little Liars, and Chuck. She lives in Los Angeles with her husband and protective pug. Oh my gosh, I'm a pug lover. How did I not see this? Pugs! Ah, I could go on and on about pugs. In her spare time, she visits coffee shops, rides horses, and writes music, and she can be found at visibilityvixen.com. So welcome, Michelle, and I'm going to kind of turn it over to you. Thanks, Doll. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, everyone, for having me. What we're going to be diving into today is talking about branding. Branding can seem like this all-encompassing, overwhelming word, and you feel like if I don't have everything perfectly in place, I can't do anything, and it makes us feel overwhelmed and confused, and we just kind of atrophy and don't do anything. And I think confusion can be the biggest killer of businesses. So my intention today with you is to just give you some clarity. Like she said, my background is in TV and film, and so I was able to really study the reason of reasoning of people in the audience and how they see color. And then I later on was able to get my doctorate in natural medicine and understand how color really affects our bodies. So we're going to be looking primarily today at our brand's colors. And I know at least when I first started my first online business, I just picked my favorite color, which was teal. And was like, oh, it's pretty and I'm just going to do this. And it really was not cohesive with my brand, my messaging, my story. So what I'm going to try to do for you today is show you how intentional color can be for your business, for your brand, so that you can choose colors that will reach your audience exactly where their biggest pain point is. And the reasoning for that is because, yes, you want to be the voice for your business, but you also want it to be very visually stimulating so that it can actually attract your clients on autopilot, meaning that it's like this lighthouse showing your colors to the world so the right people that are meant to be in your audience will be attracted to you, whether that be on YouTube, Pinterest, your website, your social media, or whatever. So I hope that this is helpful for you. We are actually going to dive in sharing my screen for the first time on Zoom. This is very exciting. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is talk a little bit more about defining branding. And yes, you are going to need to take notes. You're about to get a lot of information. So get out your pen and paper. So what exactly is branding? According to businessdictionary.com, branding is the process involved in creating a unique name and image for a product in the consumer's mind, mainly through a consistent theme. So like for mine, it's called Visibility Vixen. Yours could be a unique name or it could actually be your name. Either one is totally fine. This is to hopefully establish a significant presence in the market that attracts and retains loyal customers. So that is what Business Dictionary tells us branding is. Now let me scroll down. Oh, oh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, you didn't see that. How I define branding is that it's what we create as online entrepreneurs and coaches to stand out from the herb, herb, herd, and attract and maintain our dream tribe. So the hardest thing that we have to do as online entrepreneurs is stand out. If you've been in any Facebook groups, if you've Googled your name or whatever, there are so many results. There's so many coaches out there. Everyone can really be teaching similar things. And, that, and don't feel threatened by that. Don't feel afraid. The intention is to be able to create such a beautiful and stand out brand that reflects your true voice with such clarity that people are immediately attracted to you. And you can go into any Facebook group. I'm sure Laura has had a similar experience. And you see a lot of people posting and trying to help, but there's not a lot of 
clear messaging on exactly how they can help you. And that's what will really make you stand out from everybody else. This is what's going to make you be able to get publicity extremely easily. This is what's going to decrease your uh, cost per spend on your ads in Facebook because your image and your message is so clear that people are going to be opting in and you'll get a really, really high click through rate. So all of those things are exciting. So our brand is our promise to our customer. We never want to fib or lie or represent ourselves in any kind of a false way that'll just set yourself up for failure in the future. We want to give you the beautiful truth of who you are with your brand. It's your brand is also your foundation of understanding what can be expected from you. It's really, really important that a person can go to your website and understand exactly what they can gain by working from you. Our brand is our differentiation. It's how we stand out. And our brand is our representation of who we are, where we're going, and where we're going to take our tribe on this incredible journey. So hopefully now you're getting a little bit more of a clue of what exactly branding is. So now we're going to start looking at color. And like I mentioned before, there are two ways that we really need to look at color. When I realized this based on the knowledge I'd acquired in the film industry and natural medicine, which is like the two polar opposites, right? It totally changed the way that I looked at my brand. So I hope this is super helpful for you. We need to look at how it affects our bodies and how it affects our audience. So let me start breaking that down for you. So in terms of our bodies, I've studied something called morphology, which is the study of light, how it affects the hormone producing glands of our body, which is like your pituitary, your pineal, your thyroid, your pancreas, your mammary glands, your kidneys, adrenals, all of that, and how that specific light spectrum gives plants nutrition to boost those systems in our bodies. I know that sounds kind of confusing. I'm going to break it down for you, but specific spectrums of light actually touch our bodies in very specific ways. So we can see here, here's all the colors in the visible light spectrum. This wonderful person shouting out this rainbow, gorgeous. So how does color affect our bodies? We see and absorb colors every day because of sunlight. Sunlight feeds our seven hormone producing glands, which facilitate every function of our body. Sunlight also feeds those same colors into specific plants so we can boost organ function. So we are beings that absolutely thrive on light. And it's really important when you're trying to reach your audience in a specific way to understand what colors really help them to respond to that pain point. And I'm going to be showing you that in a few minutes. We also need to look at how color affects our audience. Every person sees color in a different way, but on screen, they feel very differently about it. And there's a book called, If It's Purple, Someone's Gonna Die. It's a really great book that, uh, and the title was after, what's her name, Catherine Zeta-Jones in Chicago. That's like the big title for it. But when people are looking at a color on screen, they tested thousands and thousands of people, and all these groups felt the same way about specific colors. So because we're, most of us are online entrepreneurs or online coaches, we have to know what does this color, what emotion does it evoke in our audience? Because if we don't know that, you may be using a brand color like Neo Blue or something, but if you're really looking to help support people in creating healthy relationships, you're going to want to be much more in the purple family. If you represent yourself as blue, you're kind of narrowing the amount of attraction that you can have with your clients. So let's dive into it. I'm going to start with gold, and we're not going to read through this whole slide. We're just going to kind of go over it very briefly. But gold is centered in the mind, also known as our pituitary gland. So when the gold color is completely balanced in our bodies, it provides our intelligence, our memory storage, our ability to receive new information, form our impressions, command thoughts and thinking processes, and have cognition and knowledge. So this is really the mind center where all of that start, starts happening. So this is a really powerful brand color if you're really working in the mind. In film, gold is also used to symbolize wealth, tradition, and prosperity. So anywhere from like a rich playboy to a rich historical culture. So you can see how if someone's a money coach, like Stephanie Nicolich is a great example. She uses gold as one of her primary colors because she wants to help people increase their passive revenue and build 
their wealth. This would be an incredible color for that. A mindset coach could use this color to connotate clear and successful mind practices. A wardrobe stylist could even use this color to help their client feel clarity with their style and wardrobe. This is also a great color for a CPA, an accountant, anyone who's managing money. This can be a really powerful color that immediately makes your client be like, oh, she knows what she's doing. I totally trust her and I want to get on board. Let's look at yellow. Yellow is one of my secondary colors, and it is the focus center, which is in the pineal gland. The pineal gland is right here. And it's really how we perceive new information, how we look at our reality, how we have clear and focused thinking. And it's also the center that kind of commands everything in terms of if we're feeling hopeful or depressed. Our pineal gland helps us see ourselves in our future to create new things and maintain optimistic thinking. So in film, yellow is seen as the contrary color. Since we see yellow in caution signs, it can sometimes be seen as visually aggressive, which is why with this color and any other color you're experimenting with, you want to test different shades of it with your audience, with Facebook groups, kind of experiment and see which kind of, in this case, yellow really brings that positive feeling. Like this slide of yellow, I tried to pick the color that would make you feel kind of more happy, a little bit more refreshed instead of like, oh my gosh, caution sign. So we also identify yellow with the sun, which is powerful life energy. So depending on the tone, we can feel anxious or exuberant. We can feel optimistic. We can feel obsessed. It really just depends on the kind of yellow that you choose. So you can see how powerful yellow would be for a mindset coach because you're working in the mind. You're working in the focus center. If you're helping people, if you're a therapist that helps people get out of depression, what an awesome color to help your um, audience feel more hope. Yellow is such a beautiful color and I use it as a secondary color because my first color blue, I want my clients to feel motivated first of all so that they can take action. And then the second thing I want them to feel is hopeful, hopeful to be able to create a different future for themselves in their business. So yellow is such a powerful color. Let's look at green. Green, it is not the focus on our pineal gland. That's a typo, so we're going to ignore that. It's the identity center with your thyroid gland. Green is all about your voice. If you don't know where your thyroid gland is, it's right here on the throat. It's a little butterfly shape. And this is where our self-determination and identity are shaped and strengthened. Your voice, who you know you are, and how you represent yourself. I'm sure that if you thought about it a little bit, most of the women you know in your life, maybe even yourself, have struggled with being able to find your true voice, to find your true identity. That's one of the biggest pain points that women have. And so this can be such a powerful color to use in your brand to help people find their voice. Uh, so this is the blend that helps you make decisions, how you determine what is right for you, and how to speak with your true voice. In film, green is really interesting. It's called the split personality color because it can be like the skin color of the Wicked Witch and Dorothy um, in Wizard of Oz, or it can be like the beautiful jungle in the Jungle Book that um, really connotates health and life. So again, we always want to be careful with the colors that we're choosing in our brand and test them first. But green is an awesome color for a health coach, someone that's helping uh, anyone speak in their voice. I don't know what you want to call that, like a vocal coach or um, a therapist, a money coach, like I said, great color, and even a lifestyle expert. Pretty much anyone who wants their audience to find and stand in their voice, their truth. Green's a beautiful color, and I don't see it often as a brand color, um, and I would love to see that more in the future. Blue, this is my primary color. Uh, this is all centered around the mammary glands. And before that freaks you out saying, why is Michelle talking about boobs? I do have a point, I promise. Our mammary glands are our motivation center and the mammaries in the heart and lungs are very connected. It really is about how we circle our emotions through our body because our heart is solely responsible for circulating positive or negative emotions through our body. So the organ that blue is linked to is the mammaries, like I said, and it is our motivation center. 
So that means that the mammary hormones are manufactured from blue light spectrum colors and they work with the heart and the lungs. The heart and the lungs carry the rhythm of emotions and how they circulate throughout the body. So the health of this gland is vital to our daily life. This is where excitement, inspiration, and motivation come from. In film, blue is known as the detached color. It can show quietness, sadness, introspection, and even like steel blue, which is more of the color I use for my brand, can represent intellect, whereas turquoise can symbolize more interaction. So there's so many different kinds of blue in the light spectrum. Be careful what color you choose. And like I said, always test it for your audience. But blue is a great brand color for social media. The Twitter icons blue, the Facebook icons blue. Um, a lot of people use this color because it is such a social color. It's great for an emotional coach, a detox specialist, or even for a writer or copywriter. Pretty much anyone who sees motivation as their primary goal for their audience. So for me, since I do video and live streaming and branding and all of that, that for me needed to be more intellectual and motivational, which is why I chose blue as my primary color. Let's move on to orange. We do not see orange a lot. Actually, uh, the wonderful Megan Mins, who works for Fempreneur.co with Mariah Cause, uses orange as her primary brand color. And it was so exciting when I saw that because I'm like, no one uses orange. Yay, Megan. Orange is the balance center in our bodies, which is our pancreas gland. The pancreas is a big organ that kind of goes all down our midsection. And the pancreas uh, energetically balances our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of ourself. So when all of that's in balance, it allows freedom for ourselves, for the people around us. It helps you live in consistent balance because there's always room for everyone and everything you desire. In film, orange is seen as the sweet and sour color. It's generically nice, upbeat, and least dramatic. What's really interesting is that whenever a film takes place in a foreign country, it usually has more of an orange tint to it. So for example, my husband, he worked on the show Criminal Minds Beyond Borders, and they were shooting in Africa, which was actually like Santa Clarita. But they put a film uh, lens over the camera that gave everything this orange hue to make it feel more warm and welcoming and hot. So it's really interesting how people use orange in film. It can be romantic or exotic. And like I said, orange is such a great brand color for a virtual assistant like Megan Mins. She promotes so much freedom by getting all of your systems in place so you work smarter, not harder. It can be great for a designer, a food coach, a wellness coach, anyone who wants their customer to achieve life or body balance, business balance, or wants to really welcome others in. So I know I'm kind of slamming through these pretty quickly. I just want to give you a taste of how you can use color in your brand. We have two more to go, but I wanted to give you some time to take it all in, take a deep breath, and we're going to continue with purple. Purple is the relation center, which is in our kidneys and adrenals. Um, the kidneys and adrenals represent our relationships to ourselves, to other people, to everything. So when our kidneys are in balance, they support us creating and sustaining relationships with mutual benefit and lots of wonderful passion. I don't know about you, but when I started looking at all of the relationships in my life, including my business to go, am I providing and receiving mutual benefit? everything changed. And especially when you're an online entrepreneur, you have to think of every single opportunity, especially collaborations, like what Laura's doing right now, looking at the beauty of bringing that mutual benefit to your entrepreneurial relationships. It's such an incredible thing, and it is so rewarding, but only if you're giving as much as you're receiving. So in film, purple can be seen as the beyond the body color. Purple has an extremely powerful sway in the realm of the mystical on screen. It's almost always linked to the non-corporal, paranormal, ritual, magical, and non-physical. So this is a fantastic brand color for anyone that is like a spiritual or faith-based coach. I don't know if you follow someone named Lexi D'Angelo, but she recently rebranded and what's one of her primary colors? Purple. 
So it can be great for a family counselor or a workout coach, pretty much anyone who wants their client to achieve total transformation, especially in a spiritual way. Purple is a really cool color. Okay, now we're gonna talk about red. It's our last color. It's one of my secondary colors, specifically DB0021 in the color code. Um, and it is the peace center, which is centered in our ovaries or prostate for men. Peace represents when love and freedom are practiced together. I just want us to take a second because that is such a beautiful definition of peace. We all want more peace in our lives. So peace represents when love and freedom are practiced together. So this is the way to achieve peace, especially in your business. If you're feeling really overwhelmed, if you're feeling completely confused by your business, take a step back and figure out, am I really loving myself through this process? And how can I feel more free every day in my business? So when we're in balance, we're able to act fearlessly, be who we are, share who we are, and finish what is started. One of the hardest things when you're an online creator, right? We can also create new realities with this beautiful color. In film, red is seen as the caffeinated color. It can activate whatever latent passions you might bring to the table, like feeling excited or anxious. It can give power to the good guy or the bad guy, like both the Wicked Witch and Dorothy wearing the ruby red slippers. So red's a great brand color for a relationship coach, an artist, a teacher, pretty much anyone who wants to help their audience act, share, and feel true peace. So it's one of my secondary colors because after people feel motivated and more hopeful for their future, I want them to be able to literally start creating right away. So you'll notice like, I know this looks dark on the camera, but this is blue and my lip color is red. So I, those are ways that I bring in my brand colors whenever I am visually on a video or on a live stream or taking a selfie or whatever. Those are ways that I bring my brand colors to life. So I know that that was a ton of information, but I wanted to just give you guys that taste of how powerful the colors that you intentionally choose can be. Imagine being able to walk into a room with a bunch of like-minded entrepreneurs and people ask you what, you're, what you do, and you're able to say it with such clarity and confidence because you know exactly what your colors are, how they serve your audience, and how you can help. A great example of this is when I went to the Entrepreneur Edge Live event with Joanna Turner a couple months ago. I went up to her to introduce myself, and she said, oh, you're that visibility fix, and I remember you in the blue dress on your website. So it's those little things that can really, really, really make you stand out. Branding is not overwhelming. Please don't be scared by it. But when you start bringing your creative process to branding to go, I totally love and have passion behind these colors, then you can do all the technical stuff with your website and your social media and all of that. But really try to find that passion to start looking at your colors in a more intentional way. And that's the end of it, my dear Laura. Wow, that is so awesome. Like I learned so much. Yay. I just hadn't, you know, like even little things like you were saying, like how purple is great for a workout coach. And like, I just went to my personal trainer today and the, her whole place has always been painted bright purple. And I just never really thought about that. Like all these little um, things and ways that you communicate things to people, even when they might not necessarily know it, but it sort of helps lift them up or accomplish whatever you're trying to help them do. So I do have a couple of quick questions. Questions. Um, yeah, I think this a lot, and you're the expert. Um, I've heard people say that there's such a thing as a no go color, like colors you should never use in your branding. I know when I got started, somebody told me, like, oh, purple, people never buy if it's purple. And I was like, but I love purple. And so, like, are, is there such a thing as colors you shouldn't use in your branding? You know, I think it really, when you're creating your color palette, I always recommend about four to five colors. And that includes the colors that are going to be accent colors on your site. So if like that's going to be white and black for your text, whatever that is, there's two colors that you can do your primary and your two secondary. So you never want it all to be super dark, like brown and black and, you know, dark, dark, deep, like magenta red and whatever, just because you're not going to have a lot of light bouncing around in the site, for lack of a better term. But I think in my experience, 
people who say, oh, this color, people aren't going to sell with this color. I would sit them down and be like, well, what do your brand colors represent? And more often than not, they're just colors that they chose because they thought they worked well together. There's no intention behind it. So if that person was like, never sell with purple. Well, if you're trying to sell like how to build your online systems and your brand colors purple, those are completely, you know, conflicting things. Whereas if you went in more of a uh, orange realm or a yellow realm, that may work better for your clients. But I also would say never base your reality off of someone else's. So of course, take, take guidance, take, you know, people like Maria Cause or Adrian Doris, and they've been through it. And so they can give you a lot of great wisdom, but remember that that isn't your specific path. So before you go looking for outside information, I'd really sit down and feel what feels right for me. What's, what am I hearing? What's my truth in my business? Who am I supposed to serve? And really follow that. Then you can take advice and either accept or decline it if it's going to work for you. But more often than not, I think that there can be a little bit too much fear around not acting because we're afraid of doing something wrong. So I'd say always make sure that you're creating your own reality, especially in your own business. And I think all the information that you gave about the types of colors and and even how there's differentiations within every single hue, um, you gave so much valuable information for somebody who might be in that process. I think a lot of people get tripped up with branding because it does seem like this massive project. So let's say that someone watching this is thinking, oh my gosh, my colors are off. Like I need a rebrand. How do you not get overwhelmed? Like, is there a first step that you should take if you recognize that you need to rebrand, maybe go with different colors and a different approach entirely without getting overwhelmed? Well, the beautiful thing is that an audience loves to hear, I'm redesigning my website or, hey, I'm doing a total rebrand. It's like, ooh, like they're up level <laughs> exciting. So don't worry about what other people are going to perceive or what your audience might think. They're going to be a hundred percent behind you because if you're up leveling, then it means they're up leveling. It's a great thing all around. Um, but I would say if you're feeling overwhelmed and like maybe the colors you've chosen don't have the intention you're looking for, start playing around, mm-hmm. start looking at what you want your brand words to be. There's a great resource that you can find off of Google. I can't remember. I think it is, I think it's the brand deck.com, but it's like all these cards that come in the mail and you can lay them out and see which words are more on brand and which ones you don't identify with. Just start playing around, then start, go to a dressing room in a store, put on your brand colors, see how they look on you, take photos in them. You'll be amazed that if you do that and like post three different shots in a Facebook group and be like, Hey guys, which color do you think really stands out and is really in line with my brand? Here's my mission statement. Sometimes you'll be really, really surprised, but I found that every person that goes through my branding course and does a rebrand, it's such an energizing, exciting process. So remember that overwhelm is definitely a choice and just start playing around and make it fun. The whole goal is for this to be so much fun that people cannot wait to jump on that bandwagon with you. And that's such great advice, this whole idea of getting tactile with your colors, because, you know, so many entrepreneurs especially spend a ton of time, like, working on screens. You know, we're in front of the computer all the time, and and you see these colors, and you're like, oh, that's pretty. That would look nice on my website. But there's these other elements of it, too, that can sort of help you figure out what colors you gravitate towards, and honestly, the ones you feel comfortable in when you're actually wearing the color. So that's such a unique perspective that I hadn't thought of before. Well, I just want to thank you so much for all all of your insight. Like this has been so just fascinating to learn. And I just had no idea how much science there was behind it. Um, so thank you again for, for coming and talking. And it was just so, it was so awesome to learn all this. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for listening to me ramble on and on. (laughs) And it's just such a pleasure to be here supporting you. And I think you're fantastic. And I just wish everyone luck on their journey. Feel free to reach out if you need any support and just make the process fun. Okay, perfect.